If you're in the market for a new Craftsman riding mower, you may be here because you're familiar with my series on the Craftsman T210. I followed that mower from my initial review to the first oil change, even to the lift that I bought a Craftsman lift to service it, and my one year review, I'm closing in on my second year review, it's just started its third mowing season. Lots of people ask about my T210 and also why it's been unavailable on the Lowe's website. And a few of you have noticed there's a new mower on the Lowe's website that looks a lot like it called the T2200. I've been curious too because this is very similar to the T210. More expensive, but really so is everything right now. Pricing aside, a quick peruse of the T2200 specs. At first glance, they're very, very similar. Almost identical. But with a closer look and a side-by-side -side comparison, there are a few differences, some a bit of a curiosity. And I guess it's because my T210 video is the most popular 210 video on YouTube that people are asking me, is the 2200 a replacement for it, and what exactly are the differences? There seems to be a lot of confusion that's compounded by the lack of info and the fact that this is a hard mower to find in stock. But luckily, my local Lowe's didn't show it on the website, but they had one out front. Here's our chance. Me being someone very familiar with the T210, I'm going to give you a detailed look. We're going to see what's the same, what has changed for what appears to be the T210's replacement. The Craftsman T2200. Starting with a lot of identical because the 2200, it's the same base. Meaning an identical metal hood. Some say this is mostly plastic, not true. It does have plastic trim and a plastic grill, but the hood itself is metal. Headlights still incandescent bulb, so no LED yet. The front axle, that's just like on the T210, a beefy cast iron. There's the same steering arm assembly that makes up the T-Series amazing turn tight capability. A 5 inch turn radius on a standard more design, turn tight, it's legit. You know, let's do this. Rather than me going over a hundred things that I have to say same or identical on, just know that everything you're seeing is a carryover from the T210 until I get to my list of what actually is different. Because with few exceptions, this is a rebranded T210 plastic throttle lever and all. And by the way, I've had no issue with the T210's throttle in two years and now going into three seasons. Cruise control, mow in reverse, hydrostatic convenience, it's all there. Like the hood, the rear body of the mower, all metal. And made in the USA, <clears throat> with global materials. The controls carry over to that rear, like the easy access, 12 positions for the deck and the blade engagement right beside that. On the left side, the phone holder that doesn't quite fit a modern smartphone. That cup holder though, that's nice. It'll fit a water bottle or a beer can in a koozie. The 2200 has a 42 inch deck with a double blade and Craftsman slash MTD's near useless mulch plug retention system. The mulch blades are great, the mulch plug though horrible, I've been meaning to make a video on that, I have a lot of footage, I've just never put it together, maybe I need to do that. Also I just said three letters MTD, people like to point out this is made by MTD, which is true. About that, there is MTD. There's also Craftsman and there's Stanley Black & Decker. Stanley Black & Decker bought Craftsman from Sears. Which bothered me at first, but I have to admit they're doing a pretty good job with Craftsman. But guess what else Stanley Black & Decker has an ownership stake in? MTD. So I want you to think about that when you're comparing other brands made by MTD to this Craftsman because what would you rather have? A brand that's leased its name to use on an MTD more or a more made by one of the biggest shareholders of MTD? Food for thought, now back to that deck. And it's anti-scalp wheels. The T210 had four of them up until 2020 when they reduced it down to two. And you can see they didn't add them back so I guess two is a thing now. On the 42 inch Craftsman riding mowers, there isn't any fancy spindle shroudings, just open sides which I actually prefer. Easier to clean, and by the way, another 42 inch MTD deck thing that transcends all the brands. Cub Cadet, Craftsman, Troy Built, etc. There's that one little unpainted notch that I assume is where they hang these when they're painting at the factory, or maybe it's a bolt during shipping. Whatever it is, it's unpainted, it's on all of them, and it's a potential rust source. A peek at the belts and pulleys will look super familiar to anyone that owns a T210. Gas tank capacity, 3 gallons. The brass colored turn tight steering gear, check. Front tires, 15 inch Carlisle turf savers. The rear tires, also turf savers, 20 by 8.0. 
And the rear rims, those tires are wrapped around deep dish. Steel painted gray just like the front. Front aren't deep dish, they're just painted gray and steel. I like this seat adjustment mechanism. It's just like a car and the seat moves up a pretty good bit and back a pretty good bit. The metal seat frame sits on two coil springs that help a little bit on bumps. Okay, so all of that is practically identical between the two mores, T210, T2200. So why is this a rebrand if it's the same? Well, that's because it's not completely the same. There are seven changes that I've spotted that differentiate the T2200 from the T210. And here's a rundown of what's different, all seven things. Number one and two very visible modifications. Number one, the new bumper, which is significantly bigger. Now with a dual bar design and a nice plastic front cap that will protect the painted metal from an accidental nudge or two. I like that bumper. And number two, the second overtly obvious change, the new seat. They call this cut and sew high back. A stitched Craftsman logo with red accents. It's definitely attractive. I don't think it's leather, but it is leather look. And it's the second change, also one of the items I'm going to be coming back to, so keep this in your mind. Number three is a big change. This is a new engine. While it's still a Kohler 5400 series, it has more horsepower, 19.5. That's up from the T210's 18 horsepower. Now, curiously, it's the same 541cc displacement. I'm not sure exactly what they did to eke 1.5 more horsepower out of an engine that otherwise looks to be identical, but now it's 19.5. Change number four, and why I think this got a new model number, is because of the spindle blade mount. It has a new pattern. My T210 uses the common six-point star pattern blade, and I don't know how much of this is improvement versus forced obsolescence or just trying to be different. And those six-star blades, a change from the previous five-star, which had been around for a long time. The T2200's blades, a new S-blade pattern. And when I say blade, I'm just talking about the mounting system, that S in the middle. Everything else on the blade is the same. Those blades number four of the seven changes, and four out of seven is the middle ground, right at the balance point and kind of fitting here, because the remaining one's not necessarily good, more kind of budget cuts, like number five, the battery. Here is the battery on the T2200. Note that it's small and sitting inside a plastic adapter. Compare that to the battery on the T210, which is full-sized. At first, I thought maybe this is just adapted for a shortage, but then I looked at the wiring harness, and I think this is now the battery. A comparison, formerly 230 cold cranking amps and 16 amp hours, the new one 210 cold cranking amps, 11 amp hour. Now, I wonder if the regular battery tray is hiding under this, because batteries are replaceable, so that could potentially not be a big deal. But now we get to number six and another budget cut that's not easily replaceable. The Tough Torque transmission they chose to equip. Now when I bought my T210, I was down to between it and the Cub Cadet XT1, both MTD siblings. What won it for me for the Craftsman was both the turn tight and the transmission because it had a higher torque value than the Cub Cadet. So I was a bit surprised when I looked under the 2200 to see that the transmission isn't the 210's K46DM, it's a TL200D. Curious, I did some research and I find that Tough Torque lists the TL200 as their entry level light duty transmission. With the K46 from my T210, one step above that. Just look at the specs. They show the TL200 with a torque of 131 foot pounds versus the K46 at 171. And take a look at the max stated weight on axle, 675 pounds versus 915. This is especially interesting considering that the T2200 is more expensive, which is difference number seven. Between the T210 and the T2200, this more costs $22.99. That's $200 more than the last T210 price, $700 more than I pay. And that's the seven differences. Now let's talk about what some of this means. Is this a T210 replacement? Obviously, it is, at the least, the new successor to the T210, but there are a couple of important points that I feel need to be made, and they have to do with a few of those seven changes, not the cosmetic ones, I actually like those. But when I look at things like the new slightly weaker transmission, I mean, look, even with K46, with the higher torque values and higher weight capacities, there are quite a few people that have had problems with K46. Mainly, they complain about it overheating. So let's just logically think through this based on something else we know about this new more, this new T2200. 
It comes with a larger engine. That means that the lesser spec TL200 is propelling a more with more horsepower and a marketed larger cut area by double and it's also pushing more weight. I mean, it's only 10 pounds, but extra weight is extra weight. That's not to say the T2200 is a bad more. It's just now more in parity with its Cub Cadet counterpart. A couple of other observations, this new seat, it's not actually a new seat, it's a new seat cover, a vinyl cover over what I believe is the original T210 seat. My first thought upon discovering this is, wow, these are nice looking seat covers, they're not gonna last long, these are gonna get stolen. Fortunately, Craftsman thought this through and they stapled and glued this cover to the original seat. One potential bonus to this new seat cover, if it is in fact cover over the original factory seat, is that when it wears out, in theory, you could just take it off and have practically a new seat to start all over with. I also feel that this needs to be pointed out that the plastic and the painted parts look aged like they're a year old. It looks like this has been in the elements for months and I know they just put this out. Look at this fuel filter, it's even cloudy. And look up, look at this throttle cable, it's all rusty and there's grime all over this more. I mean, it really looks like it's been sitting uncared for. Aluminum oxidation apparently from the factory, my more two years old, still looks new. This makes me wonder if maybe due to shutdowns they were exposed at the factory, had to sit outside for longer. I'll leave it to you to make your own speculations and decisions because now you know what makes up a Craftsman T2200 and what's different between it and its older brother, the T210. I hope this video helped you out. If so, give it a thumbs up and I hope you consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you for watching Kev Reviews.